So today I've got Sebastian um, for a student interview here. So Sebastian joined Club Closer, I believe six to seven months ago. And he's from the Czech Republic. And yeah, he's uh, had a decent amount of success the last few months. So I wanted to get him on and kind of pick his brains and see sort of how and why. And yeah, some of you guys might relate to him. So Sebastian, do you want to just go ahead and give yourself a quick introduction? Yeah, for sure. So obviously, I'm from Czech Republic. I'm 22. I always wanted to move out from Czech Republic. So now I'm living in Amsterdam uh, for the past seven months. Um, and yeah, I had an agency before. Then I went like full in high ticket sales. And right now I'm closer for seven months. And it's going great. Sweet, man. When did you move to Amsterdam? It was like... I actually joined Club Closer, I would say, like two weeks before moving to Amsterdam. So quite like a big of a risk, you know, I were expecting a lot of new expenses in Amsterdam, but I still wanted to, I'm always like, I think you need to risk to get ahead. So uh, yeah, seven months ago also. Sick, sick. Yeah. So Sebastian is, and you won't mind me saying this, like when I first started Club Closer, my, the kind of client demographic we went after was guys trying to start their own businesses that weren't having a huge amount of success with them, specifically agency, because that's my background. Um, and Sebastian, you kind of fit that client demographic pretty well. Do you want to just talk on what you were doing before Club Closer and the agency you had yeah, when you were sure. looking to start? Well, of course. So I started like... I always wanted to do something, you know, I went to um, business and economics school, but I knew it's not for me. Uh, so I started like Amazon FBA when I was graduating at high school. I lost a lot of money there, but like it was a good experience. Same. Then I went to like being a Google. Yeah, I, I went to being a Google Ads freelancer. Um, when I met a, one a friend on, you know, university, I got into the Google Ads freelancing. I wanted to build up my agency. I scaled to six, seven K per month. Um, and then I knew like, okay, I don't like how to actually sell in English. So I knew I need to, you know, improve my sales skills. So when I met you, um, and it changed my life. So from there, obviously, uh, what I did, I started, you know, going full in sales. And as I said, I wasn't only moving to Amsterdam, taking the risk of joining club closer. Like when I do something, I do that for hundred percent. So I left the agency. I left pretty much 90%, 95% of all my clients. And I went fully in sales and I knew like I'm going to, you know, give yeah, like three months, four months of work right now, like fully to, you know, like uh, high ticket sales. And it was pretty hard. It wasn't definitely easy. I could see some guys uh, getting the success much earlier, but I was still, you know, pushing forward, uh, doing the outreach, doing everything. I jumped like on 15 different offers. Uh, I was jumping, you know, from an offer to offer. If it was good, I stayed there for a week or two. But then when I realized it's not the offer where I want to be when I'm making like 10 to 20K per month, I just, you know, get rid of it. So this is also something that, for example, John Gap, you know, in, uh, in the community helped me a lot with like realizing you need to become the person where you are aiming to be before you actually become the person. So, um, yeah, this is pretty much it. And then it got to the point where I had only 40 cents on my bank account uh, in the beginning of the month. And I didn't give up, you know, I didn't, you know, what, like, stop um, what month was the, this? the outreach. I think it was November, beginning of November. Okay. Uh, and I, I didn't have, like, at this point, I was living in Amsterdam. I didn't have, like, I had to sell all my stocks to pay the last rent. I had really like 40 cents with everything. Like it was all my... Oh, I didn't um, know that. I don't know. I don't know how is the, how is the word. Yeah, my worth, net worth. Yeah, I, my net worth yeah. was 40, 40 cents. And uh, from there, I had to sell the stocks. I was pushing forward, you know, doing the outreach. And the month, the same month, I went over 4.5K. Then I went over 10.5K. And now we are scaling. So, so just slow that down. You had... 40 cents in your bank account at the start of November, you landed an opportunity and in November you made around four and a half K and then December mm -hmm. you scaled up to 10 K. Exactly. That's kind of crazy, no? 
it is what it is. You need to push forward. Like when you know it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Like I love your response. I don't. I, I don't see you, any. You brainwash yourself into what knowing you that, like, whatever I do, I'm gonna get and I'm gonna make it happen. And it's like the best mentality to have. Yeah, I'm definitely brainwashed <laughs> with that, for sure. Well, yeah, you know, I wanna. I would say, you know, to anyone who's, lit, yeah, go ahead. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say that I would say to anyone who is listening, you know, that you just can't give up. I didn't give up when I had 40 cents and it paid off. So if you put in the work, it's going to work. Why? Like, because most people, when they kind of get there, like you were pretty much rock bottom, probably end of, uh, sorry, start of November. 40 cents in your bank account. We weren't really seeing anything work. What made you stick through? What made you kind of continue pushing, continue kind of striving to get results? Well, this is the thing. And this is the thing that I was also telling to my parents. You know, like in a high ticket space, it's not like, it's not like a nine to five where you're going to land a job and you're going to make 1K or 2K. If it was, I wouldn't pay the rent. I wouldn't be able just to pay the rent. But like, I knew like, you just need to land a good opportunity. First of all, it's not about only about your sales skills. You also need to be on a good, you know, on a good offer. If you have a good offer, you believe in it. It has a, like a good on target earning. You can make a lot of money there. If it's a fit with the team right now, I have a sick team. I enjoy every single minute working with the team. And this is something that also helps you to sell more. But like what helped me there, I would say. So like if you want to start a nine to five, or even if I go to uh, like part-time job, maybe I would make like 900 bucks, but I wouldn't be pay able to pay the rent. So like for me at this point, I, I knew like there is no other choice. Like I can't stop. And this is what like helped me because like, I knew like when you actually land a good job, you can make, you know, thousands of dollars, like pretty soon. You really like burn the boats with the agency as well. like quitting all your old clients and getting rid of your old clients and going all in with this. I think a lot of people would be scared to do that and to scared to throw themselves at it. And it's obviously one of the biggest things we see with guys we speak to that, you know, are on the fence about joining club closer is like, they want to do it. They know they can make it work, but they just can't, they're, they're not willing to throw themselves at it as much as you have or as much as the guys like inside the community are. Um, and I would honestly say that's one of the most determining factors to successful people is seeing an opportunity, capitalizing it, but actually throwing yourself at it and giving it a hundred percent until it works. Yeah. The, the worst is you're still not going to die. You know, like, you're not going to pay the rent. I was 20 or, you know, other guys, if they're like 25, they don't have kids. What's the worst case scenario? You're going to be homeless, <laughs> whatever. Like, it, you're still not going to die. There's always a chance to do something. You know, for example, in the community, you can also, you know, find uh, friends. So in the worst case scenario, if I didn't have uh, to, money to pay rent, I would just go to Manchester. <laughs> Where's the Tom and Cam? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. But also like people don't really rationalize things like that. And I think that's super important is like, okay, like what actually is the worst case scenario? Here? Worst case scenario, I throw myself at this for six months. I have 40 cents in my bank account. That 40 cents goes to nothing. I need to do something else. Like I can move in with my parents, a family member, like do something else. For like I could pick myself back up relatively quickly by going and getting a job that's going to get me like 2K a month. The worst case scenario is never as bad as we think it is. But then the upside of the opportunity that presents itself is way greater. It's way greater. Yeah, for sure. What would you say is your biggest advice to people that are looking to get in? Forget Club Closer. What's your biggest advice for people that are looking to get in? to high ticket sales, the high ticket closing space. What do you wish like kind of you knew before you went in?
it's harder than you expect first of all it's not that easy but like if you stick to it like if you stick to anything you're always gonna you know see success this is how it is in life so don't come in with expectations that you're gonna make you know uh 10k next month is it possible yeah definitely but like it's not just about that for example when i joined club closer like there is only few people who are also like six seven months in it and are still pushing forward even though they haven't landed the job if someone landed the job obviously you know they stick to it like if someone is joined with me and they haven't well he, he hasn't you know uh, landed the job he's obviously not trying to push forward anymore like there's few of them but like what i'm seeing is like people on all different programs you know all different industries they are just given up easily it's like they think they're gonna see the success in the first month two or three and if this if they don't see the success they just you know give up on this so i would say it's harder harder than you expect it's definitely worth it so stick to it and push forward yeah don't expect to buy a program and get results without putting in the work like any program it's about the role plays niche. you know it's reps I, yeah reps role plays and stuff like that i'm for example looking at life like a professional athlete you know they they have like several trainings a day and that's why they succeed if you're a sales rep or you do anything else you still need several trainings a day you need to analyze your sales skills you need to you know it's not just about waiting for the opportunity you know to you know you need to go and hunt the opportunity. Literally. And like I said, you've been like one of the most ideal students to work with, I think, because you've literally just listened, applied, learned. Yeah, it didn't happen like super, super quickly. Although six months in the grand scheme of things is still pretty quick. Like you just threw yourself at it. And that's like the best mentality to have. And you were like, okay, I need to practice. I need to learn. This is going to serve me for the rest of my life. So I might as well learn and I might as well do it properly so that it can serve me for the long run. For sure. Sweet, man. Last question I have for you then is like, what's next? 2024, what's the goals? You're 22, That's right? Really good. Yeah, I'm 22. I turned 22 10 days ago. So, yeah, I have I have few goals. Uh, I'm obviously trying to grow my personal brand in Sugar Public. Um, I don't have any like big goals with that, but like what I realized, I already, as I said, you know, I went through Amazon FBA, social media agency. Now I'm in closing. So like right now, I have over two and a half ex- years of experience and you know, making money online. And like, what do I realize is like for someone to make in Sugar Republic, the goal, they, they, re- they can't feel like, well, I would say the goal of 10K is way higher than someone can imagine. So in, 10, uh, in Sugar Republic, the goal is, for example, to make 2K. And I, what, I, what I've realized, like to make 2K in profit, it's easy. Like, <laughs> well, I'm saying that now, obviously when you are not at this point, it doesn't seem easy to you. Like it really easy is, and you could say like making 20k, 30k, 50k a month is also easy. And I think, I think it's not that hard. It's all about having the skills, systems, and like pushing forward, and you're gonna find a way how to do that. So, building a personal brand uh, is one of the goals. I want to stick with the team that I'm working with right now because, like, we are helping a lot of people, and I love it. Um, the owner is sick, and the whole team is uh, really awesome. So I want to be a sales manager as well. And monetary goal is to hit 60K per month this year. Plus I want to travel a bit more, but I want to also get some stability in my life, you know? So I moved to a different apartment. I just want to make sure that right now I'm building stability. So I'm not gonna travel for two months to South Africa (laughs) like you, but maybe going to uh, like a weekends or something. This is the plan for 2024. And enjoy time with my girlfriend. Yeah, sweet. You're in a very good spot. You're in a great team by the sounds of it. And I think that's, again, something people need to realize is actually super important. Money is one thing, but then, you know, 
you're not going to be a sales rep forever, Sebastian. No one is. Like everyone has bigger goals, bigger dreams. They want to go and start their own business. That could be you helping people in the Czech Republic. And if you can learn the sales and you can learn everything around the business and how that runs with a great mentor that, you know, is your boss, I think that's like a beautiful position to be in. And um, yeah, man, I'm really excited to see what happens this year for you. I think it's going to be huge. Definitely. It's going to be huge. And one more thing I would say, it's not only about like how strong you are, but it's also from support from your, you know, uh, your surroundings. So for example, if you don't have anyone and like, you know, the, and like if you want to be an entrepreneur, it's a lonely journey. And uh, obviously you need, for example, community. Or for me, it was, you know, my girlfriend. She helped me a lot. And I wouldn't be like, if I, if I didn't met my girlfriend, I would be a dentist right now. I would be studying <laughs> in university and being a dentist. So like, <laughs> it's also something very important, you know? Yeah, you got to surround yourself with the right people. If you've got people around you that aren't doing what you want to do, like you've got to find those people and cut the people off that are holding you back. As harsh as that sounds. Exactly. Anyway, Sebastian, man, we'll, we'll wrap things up. Really appreciate you jumping on. Um, I guess, did you want to plug anything that we can chuck in the description? Your socials, YouTube, or whatever you've got. I'm just building it up it's in check. So I guess most of this, uh, <laughs> your subscribers wouldn't understand that. But I would definitely recommend them to follow you and your socials. Because like it's just watching it, your YouTube can change your life. So this is something I would say. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for your time again, bro. Thank you very much, Marcus, for bringing me in.